Okay, this is a PGC assignment uh, guide on screencast from the 23rd of January 2013. Uh, it's specifically for the 7100 PG component 1 uh, I assignment which is due in February uh, and that's uh, a reflective review. So, details of this assignment. Uh, you can read about the assignment in the module handbook for 7100 PG on page 23 and you'll also find some guidance in the assessment handbook uh, which, which is on page 15 of the assessment handbook and the assessment criteria. It's really important that you read and use the assessment criteria as a teacher as well as a learner engaging with an assignment I, I, and that's on page 17 of the assessment handbook. Uh, and you'll find the assessment handbook if you've not got your hard copy. You'll find that within your subject module. So for DMT 7004 and for engineering 7006. That's in there within the module information section. Uh, the deadline for this assignment uh, is the 18th of February 2013 at 4 o'clock. It's electronic through Blackboard and the feedback uh, in line with uh, LGMU uh, regulations and guidelines is 15 working days or three weeks uh, and that's the 11th of March 2013. Uh, the word count is 2,000 words and this assignment component one is 40% uh, of the module marks. The second component, which is a similar, slightly longer review uh, written in phase three, is worth the other 60%. Uh, and you've also got the uh, the QTSE portfolio, uh, which is it, that's a pass or fail aspect of this module, so it doesn't uh, link to the the module marks. Okay, so we're going to do a, a reminder of the uh, typology of reflection that I keep coming back. Uh, to. Uh, I keep repeating this but it is really important and it will help you uh, uh, as a guide to writing at master's level and, and writing effective uh, reflections. Uh, so the first level uh, it's not to be thought of as being less important uh, uh, or the bottom rung of, of a ladder. Uh, the descriptive is an important aspect of setting the context so uh, uh, researchers in social sciences, so within education and other related uh, areas, will sometimes talk about a concept of thick description. Uh, thick description means detailed, uh, succinct, uh, pithy um, uh, descriptions of a context so that the reader can understand the full, uh, the full context. Uh, and it's really important that you, you uh, describe the important aspects of an incident. And, and go back to it to, to make sure that you're not describing unnecessary things or you're, you're not leaving out some aspects. So a description is on one level quite straightforward but uh, taking it further, taking it deeper and having it really to the point uh, and succinct is quite, uh, is quite a, a challenging skill. So uh, the description is a really important part but description alone isn't enough. Uh, the, the next level is comparative uh, and this is where you start to reframe or or rethink uh, the matter you're reflecting on. Uh, so, you, so you're going to be wanting to look at alternative views other than just your own. Uh, so you might be others' perspectives or research or other literature. Uh, and that's leading on to the most important part, uh, the sort of the why bother aspect of reflection. So having considered the implications, having considered the incident, uh, I, what are the implications for the future practice and how has it renewed your perspe perspective? So we don't necessarily mean changing perspective because uh, you, you might be confirming uh, a view that you held before but, but refining it. Uh, so, so we talk about a renewed uh, perspective. Um, so on picking this, you, could, you can go when you can find the paper written by Jay and Johnson uh, but, uh, but if you use the, the, the next three slides uh, as, a, as a prompt for, for your reflections, there's a series of questions that Jay and Johnson uh, put forward. So firstly, under the descriptive, uh, so describing what you're going to be reflecting on, you're asking questions like, what's happening? Uh, is it working? If it is working, who's it working for? Uh, for whom is it not working? And so on. So rather than me reading all the questions, you can maybe pause on each of these slides and have a read through and, and use these as a prompt. Uh, and I'll put the PowerPoint alongside this so you can actually open it and you can have uh, a template with those questions. Uh, so, so those questions are to use as a prompt, not as something, a template that you must go through every single question. You might develop different questions, but it's a prompt for you to get you thinking about what's important with, within these particular aspects of uh, reflection. 
So the second layer, and this is what's going to really move you up into master's level writing and thinking, so up from the 40s into the 50s and beyond, uh, it's thinking about how you're starting to look at what you're reflecting on from different points of view. Uh, so again, rather than reading through, uh, you might want to pause this slide uh, and just reflect on those questions and use them as prompts. Uh, this links really quite neatly with another uh, uh, concept which has been talked about in uh, lectures of John Moore's uh, called uh, Brookfield's Lenses. So four lenses that, that Brookfield uh, put forward uh, that you can look at comparing your experience through. So comparing it through student size. So what was the experience for the pupils or the learners uh, and, and how do you know that's the case? So how did you find that, that view or how did you gather that view? Um, so was it through you observing or was it through asking uh, the pupils or learners or, or a teacher? Uh, secondly, it's looking at colleagues' perceptions, and in most cases that's going to be your school-based tutor, so the, the mentor who's working with you, uh, but it could also include uh, uh, observations from lesson analyses uh, from visits. So, so, uh, uh, so looking at well, what do other people say about, about what you're experiencing. Uh, thirdly, and really importantly for, for uh, M-level writing, master's level writing, is looking at what literature says, so what theories or research uh, can say something about what you've experienced to, to either um, help you understand it further or explain it or to give you different ways of thinking. Uh, and, and fourthly, uh, the autobiographical, so your, your own uh, story about how you've developed, where you've, where you've come from, why you think you might have, hold certain beliefs which affect your practices, uh, and is that positive, uh, what can you build on it, or are there certain aspects that you, you might uh, want to want to challenge and renew. Uh, so that's the comparative aspect. So so you need to go through that process, uh, looking at different perspectives uh, to help you understand what you've experienced. And thirdly, and this is really getting to the crucial part, the critical part, so having considered the implications uh, of the matter that you're reflecting on, establish your renewed perspective. So, so again, prompt questions, you might want to pause at this point and have a, have a read of the questions, but the key things are, the key questions to ask when you're being critical are, what are the implications for my future practice, and how has my perspective been renewed? Uh, those are the two, two critical aspects, and that sort of gives you a little bit of a guide as to when you're actually being critical in your reflection. So uh, another way to think about it, uh, this, this came out of some conversations with, with past uh, trainees, and particularly one with, a, with an engineering trainee who'd come from electronics engineering. So we talked about the system, uh, input process output and feedback. So this might be a useful analogy to help you understand what you're doing when you're reflecting uh, and looking at, uh, at uh, experiences. So the first thing you do when you're analysing a system is you wouldn't look at the process, you wouldn't look at the complicated bits, you'd look at the output. So, so you might ask yourself, what are the outcomes from this instance? Now, by learning outcomes there, we don't mean the learning outcomes you wrote before the lesson. We mean the actual tangible learning outcomes, what actually happened uh, as a result of the lesson or as a result of the incident. Uh, next, you start to look at what was the input. Uh, what, what planning went into it? What strategies went in? What preparation had gone into it? What did you expect to happen beforehand? Uh, then we start to look at the process, look at what happened. So what was the incident? What happened in the incident? What behaviours were evident? And that could be teacher behaviours or learner behaviours. Uh, and what were the knock-on effects? Which then leads us on to the, the feedback loop, so bringing us back in. So how can we do it uh, different? How can we look at the situation differently? Uh, could we do it by observing other teachers, looking at uh, lesson evaluations? reading literature, etc. So that might be a helpful analogy for you to use when it comes to the process of, of reflecting on an experience from a, a systems analysis uh, point of view. That links quite nicely into uh, an, another bit of, of theory that uh, uh, we've talked about, and uh, that's come from Aguirre's and Sean, their uh, reflection and action with their double loop and single loop. So, uh, so uh, we talked right at the beginning of the PGC about governable variables, things that, that you can uh, that you can alter, or things that can be influenced before the process starts. Action strategies, so either through planning or through your action in a context, so what did you do, uh, and so on, and then what were the consequences. So a single loop reflection would be where you just look at what actually happened in the lesson, 
uh, and or, or the or the instant you're at, you're at reflecting on, uh, and what were the consequences? But a full double loop reflection would would go back to well, what were the what were those variables? What were those inputs? Uh, similar to the previous slide with the input process output uh, that uh, that that could have been influenced. Did uh, did I miss anything, or or did I I, I I focus in a different area? And if I focus on a on a different aspect within the lesson, would things have gone differently? Uh, so I, I'd approach either an individual pupil or a topic in a different way. So so in reality, within within this sort of reflection, you can do actually single and double loop reflection. Uh, so but you want to be thinking about well, what were the variables? What could have been done differently? Uh, and that's where where literature. Uh, the views of other colleagues, uh, uh, etc., can be really helpful in that reflection. So that's an un underpinning theoretical approach to reflection. Okay, so so moving into uh, guidance for, uh, uh, for for the assignment. So what what you're first of all going to be doing is you're going to be reviewing your progress to date against the teacher standards. And a key document for doing that is going to be the training tracking document, because that looks at each of the standards, it maps it against the officer criteria, so you've got the, uh, the four, three, two, one, sort of leading up to good and outstanding uh, with the officer criteria against each standard. Uh, so, so that's a really important part, and that, that, that will be included as, as, as your, your only essential uh, appendix, so you should be using that as a, as a guide. So, so where, where things are going well, where, where things are being effective, and looking at uh, in your conclusions, well, are there any areas you need to, to have a bit more of a focus on uh, in phase three? Uh, you want to make reference uh, to uh, the learning you've developed during your PDAs, so professional development activities that you've been doing on placement, uh, or, or you might be reflecting against university or school lectures or training sessions, or it might be something that's come out of reading literature. Uh, and that could be research literature, so 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 more more weighty and theoretical literature, or it might be the more practical pedagogical uh, literature. Okay, and you want to be discussing your teaching in terms of those educational theories uh, and ideas, uh, and uh, particularly ones you've implemented and used within your lessons or practical pedagogy. So those could be subject, so things like the DNT framework. Materials like Access FM, 4x4, Scamper, those sorts of very practical DNT uh, strategies which have been designed to prompt design thinking. Or there could be more generic stuff like, like uh, uh, Think Pair Share, different approaches to group work, uh, and, and so on. And you also want to think about research literature, so discussing your experience in terms of the wider body of knowledge, so not just focusing on your, your own opinions and your own knowledge. Okay, so continuing with guidance, uh, so you might be referring to critical incidents. There could be classroom situations. They could be arising from mentor, tutor meetings, tutorials, observations. So, so a critical incident is not necessarily something which is classroom based, although many, many of them are. Uh, or it might be something that's come out of literature. So something might have challenged you either in reading literature or through the university sessions, which is which has caused you to think and reflect. Uh, and you're going to be thinking about what's what's influenced, so critical instance in terms of what's influenced and what's either changed or renewed your approach to teaching. And this all needs to link into uh, review uh, using the review to set targets, so smarter targets for your next uh, training phase. So as going into phase three, what are your what what are your targets from these instances going to be? Not general targets, specific targets for the for what you're going to be reflecting on. So a lot of this slide you, you'll probably recognise, uh, and uh, uh, so initially, uh, when we talk about critical, we mean formative, not critical as I mean something ne uh, negative that you're criticising. Uh, it's coming back to those aspects. What what are the implications for your future practice, and how has it renewed your perspective? So things which have been formative. So it might be around your achievements in school, both inside and outside the classroom. It might be around difficulties you've encountered and how you've addressed them. It might be through positive experiences and why it went well, or why the, a positive experience went well. Because it's really important that, that when something does go well, you, you know why it went well so you can repeat it in different contexts. Uh, and, and also how you've used appropriate educational ideas and theories to underpin your practice. So, so bringing uh, the theory and practice uh, together, not as two separate things, but seeing how they link, uh, link together. Okay, and 
so I'm going to suggest a structure for for uh, uh, for this assignment, and it's going to be based on the subject knowledge construct that, that again I've talked about on a number of occasions, which looks at school knowledge, subject knowledge, pedagogic knowledge, uh, and and that comes from some research. So we're going to look at that uh, in in terms of uh, you're going to set an introduction. You're going to reflect uh, on th three different instances, one from subject knowledge, so that uh, the standard related to that it would be S3. Uh, one instance re regarding pedagogical, pedagogical knowledge, and you've got quite a lot of choice there. So, so you could have S1, S2, S4, S5, S6, S7 uh, that you could reflect on. And you're going to have a, a professional knowledge or a school knowledge, so what it means to be a teacher in a school. Uh, and that might relate to the standards in, in S8. And you're going to have a conclusion, or you're going to have concluding thoughts, you're going to have references, and you're going to have appendices. So that's, that's a general structure. Uh, so introduction one, uh, you're going to have your uh, crit critical instances two, three, four, conclusions five, references six, appendices seven. Okay, so your introduction should have a context. Uh, so you, you'll talk about possibly the number and role the NOR, the type of school it is, what the exam performance is, what achievement and attainment is like. So things like that, what Ofsted says about the school. So you're not going to name the school, but you want to give uh, a description of what the context of the school is, what sort of school it is, what it's like. And you're also going to want to briefly talk about your background, so your subject knowledge, your experience prior and so far on to, uh, the, uh, uh, the PGCE. And you'll want to give a very brief overview of the key issues that have arisen for you in phase one and two, uh, and in doing that, you'll, you'll, you'll uh, what what you could do, you could give almost like a little uh, abstract of what you're going to be talking about. So, so you could give a very brief uh, summary uh, to the instances you're going to be writing about uh, in the essay. Uh, okay, so the critical instances themselves, as I've said already, three incidents. Uh, in the subject knowledge co construct categories, so one subject, one pedagogical, one school knowledge. And if you go back a few slides, you'll, you, uh, you'll see the standards that specifically relate to those three areas. Um, so at the beginning of each section, uh, you're going to quote the most relevant standard in full, and you're going to include the sub standards. So you can incl include, say, for example, you're looking at 3A, you'll, you'll write out what standard three is, then you'll write out what the A sub subheading or sub description within that standard is, and you'll put that at the beginning of each instance. That's not included as part of the word count. That's a, that's in effect a quote. So so you'll say what the standard is, uh, and you'll put that at the beginning. So that's that's choosing one description that's that o that overarches the instant you're going to describe. But also within that, you're going to identify uh, additional I, I, or incidental standards within the text. So, so you might be referring to S3A but you're, I, as your main overarching one, but within uh, your reflection you might make statements which relate to other standards. So just like you would cite uh, some literature, uh, you put it in brackets at the end of the sentence, uh, and you can just simply, as it's shown there, so if you're referring to, uh, to something which links to S3B, just put that in brackets at the end of the sentence. So it's demonstrating your understanding of how you're, you're meeting standards w within your experience. Okay, so following on from that, you'll describe each incident. So we talked about why that's important already. Uh, you're going to use literature to compare your experience with D&T subject pedagogy. So I'd expect to see D&T and engineering subject pedagogy included. You might also compare progress as well as using literature, using weekly meetings, targets, lesson analyses, uh, etc. Uh, so remember, be critical, don't criticise. So again, I'm going to keep repeating myself here. Uh, so uh, implications for future practice, uh, how has it renewed your perspective? And make sure you're referring to your trainee tracking document, so how, how you've progressed, uh, and any other documentation that you refer to, like subject knowledge audits and so on, should be included in, in your appendices. So that's the three sections three separate critical instances. Okay, so uh, another question uh, before we go on to the conclusions is uh, where, where do the targets go? And there's, there's two options here. Uh, you can either put them, uh, uh, your targets for each instant 
at the end of the description of the instance, of the reflection of each instance, uh, so, so that would happen three separate times, or you could put them all together in the conclusions. Uh, you can choose either or. Possibly it might uh, make the essay flow a bit better if you put them with the specific instance, so you're demonstrating how you're setting targets based on your reflections. So I'd suggest you place them in a table, and don't consider these part of your, of your word count as such. So, so you're not getting around it, you're actually just saying your targets are separate, so rather than saying the appendix or, or the conclusions, you're putting it within the text in the table. And also within the table, include a very brief rationale for how, uh, how, how that target links to the reflection. So, so it's not random targets, it's very targeted targets, very specific targets to what you've been reflecting on. Uh, and I'd say between one and three targets per incident. Don't, don't be tied to, to that, but people always ask me, uh, how many, and uh, that's just to give you a bit of a bit of a su suggestion, not not a rule, but a suggestion, and ensure the targets are smarter, so specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time bound, uh, evaluated, and reviewed. So you're you're including those aspects in uh, your smarter targets. Okay, in your inclusion uh, conclusions, you should be looking at overall what are the key implications for your practice. So you're going to be doing some summarising. It's going to be very very brief your conclusions. Uh, because you've only got 2,000 words, but you want to briefly summarise the three instances and, the, and briefly summarise the target areas that you're going to be focusing on uh, and make reference to how you're going to begin doing that now. So what can you do right now before you even start phase three to start to prepare for that? Uh, and you, uh, I'd encourage you to reflect on and refer to uh, what's been written in your phase review forms by your school-based tutor. Uh, and refer to the standards that you, that you need to focus on uh, in, uh, in phase three and why that is. So it might be you've not had a chance to, to get specific evidence for specific standards uh, because of just the, the context of, of being in phase one and two in your first placement. So you're identifying, you might not have reflected on that, but you're identifying where, where your focus needs to be, more generally speaking, in phase three. Okay, so the, the appendices. I'd suggest that you embed those using insert object rather than try and incorporate them in because you get all sorts of formatting issues. It's just easier to embed embed them uh, and so so yeah, you don't have to worry about different formatting like landscape and portrait and so on. Uh, the only essential appendix is your trainee tracking document. That must go in there. Uh, the optional ones are uh, if you put something in the appendix, you should only include it if you refer to it specifically within the review. So you've, you've made mention to it. So, so it might be a footnote saying, see appendix to uh, subject knowledge audit. Uh, and you want to choose and be strategic about how you choose relevant and exec uh, uh, exemplar documents only. So, so your subject knowledge audit, lesson analysis forums, lesson plans and evaluations, which relate to specific instances that you're describing. So say if you're reflecting on a uh, on a particular lesson, uh, then you might want to include your lesson plan evaluations and if you have a lesson analysis form by your tutor, that could go in there as well. So the rule of thumb is uh, don't expect the, 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 the marker or the reader to go to your appendix unless you tell them to. Okay, and just to finish off, you, uh, you, uh, you might want to read a bit farther, you might want to see what the, what the underpinning theory is behind what what we've uh, mentioned in this in this session, uh, that's you've got enough information within this screencast to take you through the assignment. Um, just remember that you're reflecting on three separate instances: one relating to school knowledge, one relating to pedagogical knowledge, one relating to subject knowledge.